Thank you, thank you. Muchas gracias a todos. Bienvenidos a nuestra presentación. My name is uh, Dr. Mauricio Cadavi, and I'm here with my colleague, um, Amanda Taylor from Cal State San Bernardino. Um, I hope everybody's enjoying um, HEADS. Um, so today we are going to, to talk a little bit about um, um, an institute that uh, Mandy and I created. Um, it's a Canvas Institute. And uh, the reason why we created it, which is what we will talk about, is to help the faculty transition, you know, from our prior LMS to, um, you know, to, um, you know, to Canvas. And so a little bit about us. Uh, I am the Senior Instructional Designer with um, Academic Technologies and Innovation. Mandy's my colleague, uh, an Instructional Designer as well. And, um, Cal State San Bernardino um, has about 24,000 students, where about 70% of those students are Hispanic students. So we are Hispanic serving um, institutions. And I believe I was talking to Mandy and out of our faculty, um, you know, the, the, the tenure faculty, uh, Mandy, what, what was the percentage of the um, tenure faculty that are Hispanic? 18.2%. 18, 18% of our um, tenure faculty are, are Hispanic. So, um, why did we do what we needed to do? And by the way, um, Cal State San Bernardino is part of the, the larger system in what is called the Cal State University uh, system, which is 23 campuses. And there has been uh, a transition, a slow transition within, you know, across the campuses to move away from Blackboard. I know that some of you still use Blackboard to, uh, to Canvas. Um, we, um, me and Cal State San Bernardino, we decided that uh, we were going to initially go from Blackboard to Blackboard Ultra eventually, but um, it didn't really work out. And so we created a pilot with Canvas, um, you know, during the spring of 2021. Remember that we also went after the pandemic in 2020. So the whole university had moved to, uh, to online. Um, we were doing everything in, in Blackboard, um, but as the transition loomed, we decided to run the pilot for, for Canvas. And then we did our first semester, um, you know, the university, by the way, also went from a quarter system to a semester system. So not only were we going through pandemic and LMS transition from Blackboard, you know, to whatever we were going to have in this case, and that being Canvas, and also a transition from the quarter system to a semester system. And all of this was done, um, you know, through the, the Office of Academic Technologies and Innovation, right, which is our office. We did that first fall 2021, and then we were fully transitioned to Canvas in uh, 2022. Now, we had taken a look at uh, different courses that existed, you know, through Canvas or the universities, but we decided that part of um, helping faculty, um, and, and Mandy will talk a little bit about faculty resistance and, you know, effectiveness, et cetera, is um, faculty have a tendency to, one, preparatory things, meaning um, if we send them to a place that said the name of another university, oh, look at this course, um, you know, for Canvas, the faculty don't really like that. And we were also trying to establish branding. And so um, what we did is that we decided to create this institute. And to create this institute, it wasn't going to be just to uh, teach faculty how to, um, you know, use Canvas and become familiar with Canvas. But we also allowed them to be students, not faculty, but students in the course so that they also um, experience how Canvas or the new LMS would be um, as a student, therefore preparing them to answer questions from their students. Um, a very quick note is that the CCC, which is the California Community College um, system, they had all moved to campus. And so we were having students that are coming from the colleges, from colleges in California, transferring into the university um, and they were going from campus to Blackboard. So that was another sort of um, justification for why we did it. Most of our faculty were not familiar with Canvas, but the students were. Um, and, that, and that really helped a lot with what we uh, designed. Um, part of what we did um, for the course is that we did use, um, you know, design principles for effective, you know, professional development, um, as well as we wanted to measure a little bit what the impact would be on, on the faculty, um, you know, learning, learning the, the, the elements um, as they were we were continuing to remain in a, in a hybrid and, and moving a lot of the courses online. So why we're really talking about this and what you're going to see is um, 
the most fundamental ed tech used in our institution, right? Um, we need it to make sure that faculty feel comfortable with, with the LMS. Um, Blackboard had been very clunky and out of style. Canvas is um, built in a social platform, which means that um, it's easier, it's simpler. It removed a lot of different uh, tools that faculty have. Um, but faculty were finding that very difficult. So if you see on the next slide, Mandy, we then asked the question, so what is this Canvas um, Institute? What, what is it that we did? Next slide, please. So here's a quick, um, by the way, we will have a chance if we, should we finish earlier and any of you who are interested, um, we can give you a tour of, of the course. Um, you know, the, the course again was, uh, was in Canvas, was um, one of the things that we did was um, we did it in cohorts. Um, yeah, it's okay. And um, we, um, uh, the idea was, let's put uh, faculty as cohorts and also let's have faculty talk to faculty. And so we also had uh, what is called a faculty fellow. And so the fellow, the faculty, you know, who got paid uh, to teach the course will do it with each of the designers. We had several um, cohorts. I believe we've had a total of, um, Andy said 150 faculty thus far that have taken the course. Yes. Okay. 155. Perfect. So uh, the Institute itself is a multi-week facilitated asynchronous um, 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 experience. Um, what faculty get to do is to experience Canvas as students, not just as, as faculty. Um, participants were also given a stipend of about $1,000 after successfully completing the, the Institute. And one of the things that they needed to do um, was come to the uh, uh, synchronous live um, orientation plus uh, complete, you know, this course, which um, some faculty would finish it. You know, this is, by the way, this is self-paced asynchronous. Um, every week they would have a different module um, open. It will take between two hours to about six hours, depending um, on how they wanted to do it. Um, and then after this, we, we had an exit survey, which Mandy will talk about um, talking a little bit or finding a little bit about their experience uh, with it. So if, um, if we go to the next slide, uh, Mandy. Now, one of the things that we had to make sure um, that faculty sort of understood and that we were able to, to assist them was that we know that faculty are resistant to change in most cases. Um, and so how are we going to address faculty resistance, right? Um, there's a lot of research. We can provide you some of the research just at the end of the presentation. It stated that um, the LMS can affect, you know, pedagogical choices uh, and pedagogical change. Um, a lot of faculty feel that based on their ability to understand the LMS and use the LMS greatly contributes to their effectiveness of teaching um, or, not, uh, or not teaching, right? And so research shows that Faculty, for the most part, are reluctant to change, um, you know, especially when it comes to teaching, teaching practices. And um, LMS transitions, and by the way, LMS, if you were not familiar with the word, is in the learning management system, you know, like Desire to Learn, Canvas, um, um, and then uh, Blackboard, et cetera. Now, faculty were already resistant, not just to LMS, but they were also resistant to the fact that we were moving to a more hybrid and online. Thanks to the pandemic, they realized everything was moved to online. So now they needed to really um, readjust um, how they teach. Um, you know, we have the majority of the students now are, are social students, plus uh, they've been taking a lot of classes online during the pandemic and their expectations for, you know, high quality courses has also increased. Um, and so we needed to make sure that faculty understood that we were on their side, that this was not going to be uh, a technology that was pushed onto them that we were telling them, this is what it is, you learn it, um, you know, sort of, and, and uh, it's up to you. But we wanted to be um, involved with it because um, faculty, we discovered in the research that faculty may be less hesitant to use an LMS if they perceive, you know, the LMS as both useful and easy. And we wanted to make the Canvas course to be useful and easy. Um, to use, right? And so this support included, we had to provide support, which included access to technical personnel, which is um, us. Um, as a matter of fact, we've been doing office hours where faculty can just come in during a particular time, you know, 12 to one to ask questions about Canvas, um, you know, go one-on-one, -on -one, um, et cetera. 
Um, but for them, it was very important that they knew that we were there to, to assist. But let's, let's take a look. Um, if you go to the next slide, Mandy, please. So how, how did it actually look? And these are the five different sections, uh, modules that um, we had in the course. Again, if you want to take a look at how it looks, um, you know, in the background or as a student, uh, Mandy will give you the tour. Um, the five modules were obviously, you know, um, a welcoming and asking them to use some of the tools like uploading a video, welcome video, et cetera, to the canvas. We talked about best practices in course design. You notice that this doesn't say best practices in LMS use. This is about pedagogy. This is about, this is the new tool that we have. Um, let's talk about some of the best practices, you know, for that, for that tool. Create an accessible um, course, um, you know, content. The reason is that Canvas is already accessible, but you can always mess up accessibility by doing certain things. Our university, or if you're familiar with the, you know, West Coast um, or the CSU system, we are very, very big on um, accessibility. So everything that we do, uh, we run it through. Um, accessibility. And so we wanted to make sure that they also understood from the beginning um, how to use the accessibility tools in Canvas, like Ally, um, Ally, you know, to make sure that the course is, is accessible. The other one, then we got into assessing um, and assessments and alignment. And that was a, a dedicated um, module for that. And then learning apps, as I mentioned, we did Go React, VoiceThread, um, and uh, Play Posit. We wanted to give faculty the opportunity to um, experience more interactivity with um, online teaching um, within, you know, within Canvas. There are many other um, apps and applications or integrations that we have, but this were um, sort of the three main ones that we chose at this particular time. And then finally, uh, we had a course wrap up. Uh, we had um, faculty uh, talk a little bit about their experience, compared sort of um, how they were in um, Blackboard versus Canvas, some of the things that they liked, some of the things that they didn't. And those will be some of the, uh, those things that Mandy will talk about. And so speaking of Mandy, I want to um, hand it over to uh, my colleague, Mandy Taylor, and she will talk a little bit about design principles. Thank you, Mauricio. So designing the Canvas Institute was a collaborative effort within uh, the instructional design team. Mauricio and I were part of that collaboration along with our colleagues, um, Jonathan Brooks and Ron Friedman. Um, we adhered to several design principles um, specific to professional development creation. I'm going to run through a list of those um, principles and then come back and talk about how the Institute addressed or used those principles. So effective professional development should be context specific and content driven, learner centered, have act be active and engaging, provide opportunities for feedback, reflection, and collaboration, meet learner needs, meet institutional needs, include coaching and support, and be led by high quality instructors and facilitators over a sustained duration. So our context and content were intermingled. Our context is CSUSB, um, and the content is um, Canvas. We wanted instructors to learn Canvas itself. <clears throat> excuse me, and we wanted them to do more than just watch videos and um, read materials or Canvas guides. So the learner-centered um, experience was both active and engaging in the sense that participants needed to do something every single module. There was a discussion and an assignment. They were in Canvas, changing profiles, uh, settings, or notification settings, um, creating assignments, participating in discussions, and they were creating their own YouTube videos that they embedded into Canvas, all sorts of things that they needed to do um, to learn some of the mechanics of Canvas. Um, along the way, they had opportunities for the feedback and reflection, um, feedback from peers and discussions, also feedback from the facilitators um, through um, their assignments. Um, each module had some type of reflection um, activity and then the whole um, institute at the end um, there was a reflection where they looked over their entire experience and talked about um, what they learned, um, what they did, um, some of the things that they might use in upcoming courses, um, as well as to give us feedback about the course, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, we met learner needs and institutional need needs simultaneously. Um, the basic need of our learners was to become familiar with and confident in using Canvas. 
Um, the institution also needed a, a body of faculty who were familiar with Canvas um, and had confidence in using Canvas in their courses. And this is across modalities as well. Canvas isn't just for online or hybrid. It can be used effectively in face-to-face -face courses as well. The Institute was designed to provide coaching and support um, from the facilitators. So as Marisa mentioned, we had a faculty fellow. Um, so from the faculty side and faculty perspective um, and kind of the direction of ways they could use um, Canvas in courses and also the instructional design perspective. And um, we were very adamant in, in our design that an instructional designer needed to be part of the facilitation of the course to bring in um, these pedagogical principles, the theory and ways to use technology effectively. And then sustained duration. We knew um, from our own experience, as well as some of the research that faculty needed more than a single day to be in, in Canvas and to learn this material. And so our summer iterations um, in summer 2022, those were three week intensive Canvas Institute experiences. So they had all the work to complete within three weeks. Um, and the idea there was to have shorter, more intensive sessions so we could get more faculty through um, the Institute. Um, and then in the fall, we had fall 2022, and then our upcoming spring iteration, which starts in a couple of weeks, will be six weeks long um, so that there is more time and that faculty can adjust their schedules based on um, their teaching load and other responsibilities. Okay, so with all that, how do we know that this institute is being is effective or has been effective? So we measured the institute's effectiveness by analyzing exit survey data and the final reflection assignment. The final reflection was um, anywhere between eight to 10 questions that faculty had to respond to in a discussion board. And then they could talk to each other to kind of commiserate about their experiences. The exit survey was hosted in Qualtrics and had 12 questions overall. Um, we had three of these were Likert scale questions and measuring participant confidence in using aspects of Canvas. We had a combined total of 155 participants complete the exit survey between all of the sections of the summer and fall 2022 iterations. We currently have about 35 participants um, signed up for our spring course and registrations end today. So we'll see how much more, how many more people we can help this time through. For the purposes of the survey and for the data that I'll be talking about in a few moments, confidence was defined as, quote, pertaining to participants' perception of their knowledge of and ability to use tools, navigate, or create content within Canvas. Confidence did not pertain to whether participants will use everything presented in the Institute. Um, to be honest, there's really no way that you can implement everything in a single course that we talk about in the Institute. The idea was to introduce some basics and some tools available in Canvas and give them the option to choose what works best for them. <clears throat> so let's take a look at what we, what we found. So first, um, the Institute was open to faculty of all ranks from all departments and colleges. Um, CSUSB has six colleges, the five listed here, Arts and Letters, Education, Jack Brown, Business and public administration, natural sciences, and social and behavioral sciences, as well as the College for Extended and Global Education. We did not have anyone identify as being part of um, the College of Extended and Global Education, so we are not able to measure our impact there. Um, however, of the 155 participants, we see a generally even distribution between arts and letters, natural science, and social and behavioral sciences, and education and Jack Brown colleges were also relatively even. What's important to note here is that the Institute had a campus-wide um, participation and impact. And so broadly speaking, um, what faculty learn in the Institute um, will broadly impact all students that they come into um, contact with. So now some more data data fund and I attribute this to Mauricio wanting to see some of the charts and numbers and um, learning to use data and it was useful for me as well. 
So this chart that we see here depicts participant confidence in creating Canvas content, such as pages, assignments, quizzes, discussions, and modules. Participant confidence clearly increased between pre and post Institute completion. The data show a 506% increase in very confident ratings and a 97% decrease in unconfident or very unconfident ratings. Excuse me. So some of the things or related activities in the Institute um, to measure this or what, how, we, how participants did this work. They had to create a Canvas module, a Canvas page, Canvas assignments, both with a learning app and without. They needed to upload a file to Canvas, create and edit a discussion board, and create and edit a Canvas, edit a Canvas quiz. They could use either new quizzes or classic quizzes. Participants provided screenshots of completed activities and were assessed on completion via a Canvas rubric. Our focus, <clears throat> excuse me, our focus in the Institute was the actual mechanics of creation and ensuring participants were comfortable with those mechanics. So we did not necessarily see and go into like, the quality or the effectiveness of the assignment or the things that were created. We were more interested in the fact that they were able to use the interface to create those materials. This chart we see depicts participant confidence in creating assignments learning using learning apps, such as GoReact, PlayPosit, and VoiceThread. The data show a clear increase in participant confidence after completing the Institute. There's a 700% increase in very confident and confident ratings, and a 97% decrease in unconfident, very unconfident ratings. The learning apps module was also rated as one of the most useful throughout the Institute. We chose to focus on these three learning apps for the sake of time and to minimize complexity in the training, which was designed for novice Canvas users. We had also noticed in our own um, general um, data review that these three apps were the most widely used across the university. And so we thought these would be the best ones to focus on for beginners. Participants were given a brief overview of the tool within the, within the Institute. Then they completed an activity as a student in each tool. They then had to create an assignment in one of these tools um, as an instructor, just to get used to, again to the basic mechanics of assignment creation. Finally, they completed a reflection activity where they discussed which tool they might use in an upcoming course and how they might use it. This chart depicts participants' overall confidence in using Canvas in general. And this gets at the heart um, of the purpose of the Institute. The data show that overall confidence in using Canvas clearly increased from pre to post Institute participation. Zero participants rated themselves as unconfident or very unconfident after participation. There is a 1200% increase in very confident participant ratings and a 206% increase in total confident, very confident ratings. There is an 83% decrease in neutral participants, suggesting a move to either confident or very confident. These numbers again suggest that the Institute's primary goals of increasing participant overall familiarity with and confidence in using Canvas were met. We're hopeful that the upcoming iteration will be as well received. And as we continue to um, analyze the data we've received, we can get a, a clearer picture of how the Institute um, has been effective. So finally, one last thing I want to talk about um, is which modules um, participants found most useful. We asked them to identify the most valuable topics within the Institute. Um, this was part of the exit survey. Participants had the option to identify more than one topic. We then matched responses to the corresponding module or modules in the Canvas Institute to determine which was most helpful. Um, in order, module five and module two were the clear favorites. Module two covered the best practices of course design, including principles about course alignment and introduced the basic Canvas tool. Module five covered the learning apps, GoReact, PlayPosit, and VoiceThread. And despite some complaints about and some technical difficulty with some of the assignments within that module, participants did find this module to, to be very useful. And PlayPosit was one of the most popular tools um, discussed. So 
I'm going to turn the time back over to Mauricio to talk about some of the additional participant feedback that we received. Wonderful. Thank you, Mandy. I just love numbers. Um, so as designers, we wanted to know, was this effective? Did it work, right? Um, Mandy and I are also both, um, you know, we have teaching experience. And so we have the particular advantage um, over instruct other instructional designers, which is to be able to be in the classroom, test some of the theories, principles of design. Um, and so when we created this, we wanted to know, um, did it work, right? And that's why we did um, the, the questions or the exit surveys. Um, we also had them in, engage in discussions among themselves, um, et cetera, about their experiences. And now remember, we gotta remember that um, faculty were not taking this course as faculty. So their, their sandboxes, for example, or their own courses, yes, they were in the, um, as faculty, but in our class, they were as students because we wanted them to experience it, you know, take them back to the classroom to see what it is that they can do uh, for them to experience it as students. And some of the, the, the feedback that we got, obviously suggestions is always, is always great to get suggestions, uh, uh, which fortify some of the design principles, which is um, clear instructions. You know, sometimes uh, the instructions were a little bit, um, could be confusing between the prompt and what they were actually needed to do, or making sure that um, a how-to video um, actually matched with the text that was provided uh, to them. Faculty always want more screenshots and videos of how-tos, right? I think sometimes they just want to be able to click on a video that is two, three minutes, then, you know, uh, be on the phone or send an email, create tickets. Um, we are hoping to find, um, you know, more data that suggests whether or not they liked three weeks versus, you know, the six weeks, which is why we started to do the six weeks right now. Um, one thing that we talked about, but we didn't necessarily go into it in the course was the idea of alignment. We talk about it with faculty when developing courses, uh, but one of the suggestions was, you know, um, to reconsider the placement or the inclusion of those course alignments uh, with regards to uh, the activities that they were going to do. They wanted more tools. I mean, you saw in the previous slide, you know, that large spike of, um, of the bar, you know, saying that the module that they enjoy the most were the learning tools. And I think faculty right now, um, more than ever, um, are more open to the idea of what are the tools that can facilitate both uh, my teaching instruction and students learning. And so they say more tools. Canvas has more tools. We have more in, um, LTIs. We just couldn't cover um, everything. They um, they also suggested more topics. You know, even though this was a five module, you know, three week um, semi intensive um, course, they wanted to talk more about attendance. How do you take attendance? Um, SCORM files for like you know publishers uh, that give them um, books, texts, etc. Um, and again, more learning um, apps. And then um, obviously is faculty, and as we know. Um, Incentives are a big part of it. And so they wanted larger um, stipends. We did have several faculty, you know, sort of tell us, I'm sorry, it's too much work for a thousand dollars, right? Um, some faculty said, well, what if I do this and I get like a course release? I don't get, I get paid, you know, for a course that I'm not gonna teach, but then I, I do yours, et cetera. And that's more of above our pay, uh, pay grade. Some of the accolades that we've received um, is that it was well organized. So I like that um, because we put a lot of thought in the um, scaffolding of the information. It was very useful for them, for the majority of them to see how students actually um, experience the course. As faculty, we see it one way, but as students, they see it another way. And it was very good, which is the reason why we wanted to do it for them to be students. Um, Facilitators were very quick to respond, as you know. Uh, those of us who are in a service, um, you know, sort of field, when the faculty picks up the phone, sends an email, they have any questions about it, they want to make sure that they can talk to somebody. And we were always um, available to them, and they noticed, and they say that we were uh, quick to respond. Um, obviously, they love the fact that they were learning, doing professional development for something that was directly related to them, and they were also getting a stipend, so that was a plus and the information itself, right? Um, I mean, we went from, you know, it took us, it took us week, weeks to be able to summarize it into, um, you know, more useful information and they, they actually um, liked it. Now, student impact, if we go to the next slide. 
Um, we don't yet have data on the students, the faculty, you know, using the students. We have received um, in time emails from faculty saying, oh, you know, after I implemented all the things that I learned in the Institute, um, you know, I've received these compliments from students saying that they're, they like how the course is organized, um, you know, the information, the descriptions, et cetera, like that. And so that actually helps us and helps faculty know that, uh, you know, repetition and information and clear information and instruction is, it's very, very good uh, for that. Now, we would like to actually ask faculty to ask the students um, about their courses uh, themselves. Maybe we can um, introduce that um, in the future. Now, I am taking a look at the clock and that means that we've been speaking for about 32 minutes. Um, I want to open it up for some questions. Um, thank you, thank you, Mandy. Um, if, um, if there are not any questions, then uh, those of you who would want um, you know, to take a look at the course itself, like a live view of, um, of the course, let us know. But um, at this time, uh, this is our presentation. And um, if we have any questions, the floor is yours. This is a question? Yes. Okay. Um, please, before the question, say your name and the institution. Just say it? Okay. Before okay. the question, your name okay. and the institution. Hello. Oh. This is Francisco Garcia from uh, UTRGP. Hola, Hola Francisco. <laughs> Um, um, he was able to see you by the other camera. So I turn this way? Yes. Okay. Well, the camera is pointing. Uh, so Mauricio, this Canvas Institute, you implement that uh, after you decide that you move into Canvas, right? Or is it before? It was, it was like a pilot? Before the decision, or you already decided that you were moving to that? So we had, thank you, Francisco. So when we knew that we were going to move to Canvas, um, we knew that we were going to have to do something. We've done a lot of knowledge base for Blackboard, but we had really not done much in Blackboard, um, you know, for the time that we had been. So when we knew that we were going to move to Canvas and that it was inev inevitable, we didn't know exactly when, we knew that we needed to take the opportunity to train faculty, to work with faculty, uh, and to help them understand Canvas uh, much better. We've had faculty that have been in Blackboard for many, many years. And so uh, we knew that there were certain groups of faculty, you know, um, and, uh, and we wanted to target, you know, those, those groups by allowing them to know that there was going to be, you know, more, um, more help with regards to, to Canvas. So when the conversation began about, we are going to have to do a pilot in Canvas. It looks like we're going to have to move to Canvas because we didn't like Blackboard Ultra. Then um, the designers got together and said, well, this will be a great opportunity to um, discuss how are we going to teach faculty about, about Canvas. And so it almost happened the moment we knew that there was going to be um, a Canvas, at least a pilot and moving forward, we knew that this was the opportunity for us to start developing something uh, to have ready for the faculty. Thank you. If I can add to that a little bit, the timing here too is we had <clears throat> one academic year where we were supporting Blackboard, Blackboard Ultra and Canvas for early adopters. So we had kind of a transition academic year and that's where the planning for the Institute really kind of took off and we spent months actually planning the Institute and the experiences. Um, and then when we got closer to Canvas becoming the sole learning management system, that's when it was like, okay, so early adopters have taken this on, but now we have to get everyone else ready. Um, they no longer have a choice to use Blackboard. So, um, so that's when the Institute started in the summer of 2022 to prepare for this year, which is uh, our first year as Canvas only Institute. Thank you for your question. Can I, can I add it to it? Yes, you, please. Of course, <laughs> please. Did you have some type of um, evaluation committee before the decision moving into Canvas? Did you fully evaluate uh, Canvas and you fully evaluate Ultra before the decision? So I'll, I'll start answering that. Um, yes. So 
at our university, we have something that is called ATDL, which is the um, it's it's a, it's an executive group um, made out of faculty. Um, any decision that the university through our department is going to take with regards to either LMS or implementations um, that directly impact um, faculty, we have to bring it to the um, ATDL committee. Um, and they ask the questions, you know, what are we going to do? How cost, et cetera. So that's the first part. Um, we also knew that as a, as a system, you know, the CSU system, more and more universities, um, you know, were moving to campus. And so we had conversations both, both at the instructional design level as well as upper administration with regards to what are you doing in your campus, you know, to, uh, to facilitate the transition and, uh, and for Canvas, why Canvas, et cetera. So we gather information from that, from that perspective. Now, our campus, it's known for not really doing anything unless we have faculty by end. We have other institutions within the system that say, uh, we don't even ask faculty. If we have to choose um, you know, something to do, we're just going to do it and then um, you know, ask questions later. And then we did do the pilot. So a call went out to the university um, asking for, Mandy, do you remember how many people were in the pilot? Was it 30 faculty, 30 courses? I wanna say it was like 25, between 25 okay. and 30. Yeah. Yeah. And so our director sent um, a call, uh, you know, for participation and said, um, you know, campus community or faculties, you know, we are um, thinking of using Canvas and transitioning to Canvas. Would you like to pilot it and then give us information? And so we had, um, you know, when Mandy said that we had at one point we were supporting Blackboard, Blackboard Ultra in Canvas, it was that pilot um, that we were supporting. Um, now, not to get into the nitty gritty of, of things, most of the faculty that, that uh, wanted to go in the pilot were faculty who knew Canvas, either because they've used it before or because they also teach at the community college system. So they're familiar with Canvas and therefore their reviews were, you know, we love Canvas. Just like um, I see in chance, you know, Dr. Uh, Mary Toledo said, Canvas is very user friendly and I love it. We had a lot of faculty that is like, yes, we love Canvas, let's do it sort of thing. So. Even though we did the pilot, we did it with faculty that already love Canvas. Um, and so, um, so that's, that's how it happened. Once we collected that, we moved, uh, we moved uh, forward with, uh, with Canvas. Excellent, thank you. I just have, I have another question. This is Roberto. Like, what about the faculty that did the, the pilot for Ultra Learn? Did, did you get any, with, were, there, were there faculty that were like, yes, we love Ultra? I believe it was only like five faculty who wanted to do um, ultra. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and uh, and we did. Um, Andy, did we do ultra for two quarters? Maybe three quarters. Um, I only did it for two. If you did it longer than that, it was before. Yeah. So I, I yeah. So I think I did it one quarter before you came in, and then the two quarters with you, and we went from five faculty using it to two faculty using it. Um, and they were just not liking it. Um, I mean, it was, it just didn't work. Um, you know, we have a long history with, with Blackboard. We've been with Black for 18 years, 17 years, and there were other things going on. Um, and so we had very limited um, Blackboard Ultra um, sort of feedback just because faculty did not want to, uh, to move it, you know, to move towards uh, Blackboard Ultra. During the time that we were doing it, we discovered a lot of um, issues with it on the, excuse me, on the technical side of um, Blackboard Ultra. And so uh, we knew we knew that that was not going to be uh, feasible, so. And in, in my anecdotal experience with um, instructors who used both Ultra and then went to Canvas, most of them um, had a better experience with Canvas um, than they did with Ultra. Um, and a learning curve on you know both sides, but Canvas, to them was generally easier um, to, to use. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah. So it is 41 minutes. Um, how are we doing with, with time? It's 45 minutes, correct? So we have four more minutes of okay. either questions or... So do we have to end up by 2.15? Uh, okay. And I, I want to very quickly, unless there's any other questions, um, if you do want to take a look at it, um, we have our, Mandy, can you go to our contact information page? 
plus, you know, um, so we, in, as you can see, we have this here. You also have a way to, you know, to contact us through uh, through Hets. I will be more than happy to uh, to talk to you a little bit more about lessons learned, um, you know, with Canvas. It's not um, on their screen, I don't think. Oh, I think they're still showing us um, there. So let me, um, I'm going to put in chat. They, they will see you. Okay, thank you. And then, oh, okay. Um, and I do very quickly uh, want to also add that Mandy had worked on something that was called Essentials of Canvas, um, and it was uh, a self-paced, what, Mandy, about six hours? Yeah, six to eight. It depended on how deep dive you went in the material. Yep. Yeah. So so Canvas, part of that original contract was that Canvas obviously has um, tours of, of Canvas and then, um, you know, courses, self-paced courses about, you know, teaching with Canvas or administrators with Canvas or students, you know, with Canvas. However, as I mentioned earlier, um, part of part of this is that their information is very genetic, right? Um, each university has their own intricacies of, of doing certain things, et cetera. And so faculty do not really develop an attachment to neutral videos, um, courses that don't look you know, like their courses look, et cetera. And so even though we still have a small percentage of faculty doing the self-paced or self-guided um, essential with Canvas, the Institute allowed them for them to play within Canvas to look at the videos and materials and the knowledge base that we have created that looks just like their courses with the templates, with the colors of the university, et cetera. And that's, that's something that is, um, is very important that to us, and to faculty, um, you know, when developing, um, you know, sort of like branding that that this was done for them, not that we're just simply sending them to an external website or external YouTube, you know, to watch other universities' um, courses. So, okay. Well, I want to take an opportunity to say thank you very much to those present and online. Um, this recording is going to be available, I believe, on, on, on HETS. And, um, oh, I see that they're going to say something. Um, on behalf of uh, Mandy, Taylor, and myself, I wanted to continue to uh, wish you a wonderful um, HETS conference. And, um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you for your thank presentation, you. and thank you for your questions. Um, Participant in this session in present, please use the QR code and your name badge to access the link and evaluate the session before leaving. Please select the correct track and time. So participant, please access the evaluation link in the chat so you can complete the evaluation as well. Thank you very much for your participation in this content. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, Mandy.